so in the last session we discussed about the introduction of this course so what are the applications we have as a part of oracle ebs r12 scm and very high level we discussed what we do in the each and each application and what is the meaning of erp and other few points we discuss how we are going to run these classes and what should be your learning approach these are the few points we discuss now we'll talk about the business processes what are the basic business processes we have to understand when we work on scm applications so when you work on this scm applications supply chain management applications primarily we have to understand two processes primarily we have to understand two processes one is procurement process the other one is sales process these two processes are very much mandatory to understand how the transaction flow works or else what are the activities can be performed by each and every department which will be involving in this respective processes first let's talk about procurement process okay procurement process if you take simple example if we are going to buy laptop what process we follow it's very simple if you want to buy the laptop say you are a student and you want to buy the laptop in that case first point is your requirement say so you are doing this course you identified the requirement as you need laptop that is nothing but requirement okay first you have to identify your requirement okay i am talking about procurement process first we have to identify what is our requirement so the requirement is laptop you want to purchase a laptop when you identify the requirement if you are a student ideally what we have we do is when you identify the requirement immediately we'll talk to our parents saying i need laptop and we need so and so amount of money okay so this is how we have to speak to our parents to get the permission to buy the laptop so that we can get the money from them so the second point is we have to get the approvals acceptance once you get the acceptance from your parents the next step what we do we'll go and visit the shops we'll visit the shops and we'll get the quotations we'll get the quotation saying this is my laptop requirement this sort of configuration i required and please give me the quotation that's how we'll visit multiple shops and we'll take the multiple quotations once you receive that quotations from the multiple shops we can analyze those quotations we can analyze those quotations saying in from which shop with which configuration or else what are the configuration we required who is giving at best price we analyze it's all about finding who is giving at best price and warranty or guarantee by including other benefits so that's how we do the analysis that only we call as quotation analysis we simply call as quotation analysis we do the quotation analysis after doing the analysis say you visited 10 shops and you received the quotations from 10 shops and you analyze those 10 quotations finally you identified one quotation is the best quotation where the shop guy is offering at very best price or less price so then you will be choosing the best quotation choosing will choose best quotation sorry will choose best quotation out of the multiple quotations whatever we received from the shop once we are okay with that 
we'll just talk to that shop guys and we'll purchase we'll purchase the laptop and we'll make the payment and we'll take the laptop okay that means we can they can hand over the laptop to us so if you look at this simple procurement process as an individual when you are going to purchase something it's a very simple process max nobody is going to involve in this process only you may get the permissions from your parents or someone else who can help you to get that laptop and rest we can manage without taking other support but if you take the same example in the organization point of view different departments has to involve for, to execute this kind of process if an individual required on laptop this process can be followed if organization is going to purchase the laptop so it could be laptop or anything if organization is going to purchase something whatever they need to supply to their customers or to use in their organization which departments are going to be involved and what department will have their what which department is going to have what sort of responsibilities will discuss and understand now okay so first let's talk about procurement process okay or you can call as simply purchasing process when i talk about this procurement process ideally these are the departments are going to be involved so inventory department and purchasing department will play the major role in terms of procuring whatever we need in the organization so those departments will pass the communication to other departments what purpose what sort of information they'll be passing to other departments we are going to discuss now so let's take simple example we need 100 laptops the requirement is we need 100 laptops there is shortage within the inventory the reason could be we need 100 laptops within our organization or else the requirement could be there is one order from the customer and sales department is informing us to get 100 laptops ready in the warehouse so that that can be delivered to the requested customer it could be anything let's take simple example we need 100 laptops so now from where we are going to start the process okay from where we are going to initiate the the activity of purchasing the laptops when there is a need of purchasing 100 laptops so first we'll verify the stock is available or not within the inventory if stock is not available within the inventory what inventory department do is they raise the requisition okay inventory department has to raise the requisition they have to raise the requisition what does it mean by requisition within the requisition we include the information like which items we required item is laptop how much quantity we required okay by which date we required all the details we can include within the requisition when requisition is raised within the inventory department okay once we identify the requirement within the organization need within the organization the inventory has to take the responsibility of creating the requisition once the requisition is created within the inventory department the who is the supervisor or manager that authority of the people has to approve for that requisition okay so we have to get the approvals first identifying the requirement then getting the approval for the same requisition okay as acceptance from the respect to authorities who are who is the supervisor or manager within the inventory department so that means what inventory department is doing inventory department is raising the requisition if there is any requirement of material purchase and that has to be approved by supervisor or manager apart from that what inventory department do they will maintain the stock right the inventory department responsibility is maintaining the stock 
the inventory is responsible to maintain the stock if there is any shortage of the stock the inventory department will take the responsibility of creating the requisition that should be approved once this requisition is approved what inventory department will do is that information they'll pass to purchasing department they'll pass that information to purchasing department saying we need 100 laptops okay we got the approvals within the warehouse please go and purchase the 100 laptops by following this approved requisition information that means the approved requisition information inventory department will be passing to purchasing department so once purchasing department receives this approved requisition information what they do is they'll create the request for quotation we simply call as rfq request for quotation so now the purchasing department responsibility is they have to get the quotations from the vendors they have to get the quotations from the suppliers so the requirement is 100 laptops that is approved by inventory department now purchasing department will request for quotations they'll contact the multiple vendors and they'll ask for the quotation saying we need 100 laptops and uh, we need Dell laptops or Lenovo etc. They will give all the specifications and they will request for quotations. Whenever purchasing department will request for quotation, the vendors will start sending the quotations. The purchasing department generally won't request for quotations on specific vendor. Ideally the quotations we try to get from the multiple vendors. So whenever purchasing department requests for quotations, suppliers will be sending the quotations. That means the purchasing department will receive the quotation. Okay, it will receive quotations from vendors. Okay, vendors. First they'll request for quotations, which we are calling as RFQ, then we'll receive the quotations we receive the quotations means purchasing department so purchasing department will receive the quotations from vendors once we receive the quotations from the vendors we have to do the analysis we have to do the analysis the purchasing department has to perform the analysis to find out the best quotation okay so that we call as quotation analysis or say code analysis So first step is based on the requirement purchasing department will request for quotations and the same department will receive the quotation from the vendors. What are the quotations received from the multiple vendors? Those need to be analyzed. That we call as quotation analysis. By doing how we do the quotation analysis very simple. Which supplier is offering best price? and which supplier is accepting us to pay within 10 days or one month or two months that means who is offering the best payment terms some suppliers may say each laptop cost is 25,000 rupees but we have to pay immediately the other supplier may say the laptop cost is 30,000 you can pay after six months so it totally depends on the purchasing department strategy to choose which is the best quotation okay there will be many points which purchasing department will consider when you do when they do the quotation analysis the primary elements are price and payment terms or else some supplier may offer okay the laptops on credit base also so by they will look into all these points and they will try to find out the best quotation okay by doing the quotation analysis, purchasing department will choose the best quotation. They will choose best quotation. Sorry. They will choose the best quotation. So how they are choosing the best quotation? Based on the price, based on the terms. And 
maybe the credit what custom suppliers are offering they look into different parameters various points to finalize the quotation they'll choose the best quotation then purchasing department will take the responsibility of placing the order to custom uh, suppliers okay suppliers they'll just place the order that we call as purchase order okay simply we call as PO once purchasing department chooses best quotation then they will create the purchase order we will place the order to suppliers so once we place the purchase order supplier will supply the material again here so RFU whatever the quotations we are requesting and receiving and analyzing and choosing the best quotations everything will happen within the purchasing department but once you place the purchase order that would become sort of legal document where supplier will respond to that by supplying the material so that is the reason however we got the approvals for requisition to take the initiative of this procurement process so purchasing document is going to be a very essential document in this procurement process that is the reason the moment we create the purchase order we have to get the approvals for purchase order okay approvals also required so purchasing department they create the purchase order and they have to get the approvals from the purchasing department from the, the right people who are authorized to give the approvals against the purchase orders fine and once we place the purchase order the supplier will receive this purchase order and supplier will respond to that purchase order by supplying the material that means we receive the material into our organization okay we'll receive the material the moment we receive the material into organization and one more point within the purchase order we clearly specify the information so who is the supplier and which item we require how much quantity is required what is the price at what price we are placing the order and where supplier has to send the material and where supplier has to send the invoice against that purchase all the details we have to specify again when supplier has to supply the material all the details we, details we have to include within the purchase order and that need to be approved once the purchase order is approved you may print and send to the supplier or else you can email or you can fax it so there are different ways how you want to share that purchase order with the suppliers once purchase order is received by supplier supplier will respond to the purchase order by supplying the material that means we will receive the material whenever we receive the material that will record in our books as a goods receipt or simply you can call as GRN will record GRN GRN stands for goods receipt note or simply you can say receipt how much quantity of material or items are called as goods we received from the supplier that will make a note and again that material we are taking to which inventory everything will be addressing when we record this GRN goods receipt note so who will take the responsibility of creating the GRN or say receipt so ideally inventory department will take the responsibility of recording the receipt since purchase department is involving in the entire process purchase department can involve in the process of how much quantity for how much quantity we place the order how much we received or else generally inventory department will take the responsibility of recording the receipt but as per our application this GRN can be recorded from the inventory or purchasing applications so that's how we have so once material is received okay there will be cases where we have to return the material back to the supplier say we received 100 quantity of laptops there are two laptops which got damaged if any damage takes place we have to return back to the supplier that we call as purchase returns
okay purchase returns so this recording the receipt and performing the purchase returns this need to be handled by inventory department but there will be involvement of purchasing department also okay this recording the receipt how much quantity of material we are receiving into inventory and if any material we want to return back to the supplier so inventory department should take the responsibility but purchasing department also will involve in those sort of activities since they have a uh, prior tasks as a purchase order which they placed and where they are in touch with the suppliers okay so as a process try to understand the purchasing department will raise the requisition based on the approved requisition and purchasing department will receive the quotations from the multiple vendors and we have to do the quotation analysis then we'll choose the best quotation then we'll place the purchase order to the suppliers after approving the purchase order whenever we receive the material from the supplier we have to record the grn goods receipt note and finally if any returns are required we have to record the purchase returns whatever we are purchasing if any sort of material you want to return back to the suppliers yes we can record the purchase returns the reality these two activities will be performed as a part of inventory department but as a part of process let's try to understand to know the sequence what we have to follow but remember these activities these two activities will happen within the inventory department so that's how we can uh, understand what are the different activities would be performed by purchasing department once we receive the material what purchasing department will do is the purchasing department will pass this grn information with payables department saying from so and so supplier so and so material we purchase with this much quantity and we have to pay within how many days say we have to pay within 10 days or one month or two months all the details purchasing department should communicate with the payables department so here if you notice the purchasing department is creating the requisition against purchasing department is creating rfq against the requisition now whatever the material received by organization against that grn the payables department should create purchase order sorry purchase invoice so we have to create purchase invoice so purchasing department will pass this grn information to payables department saying this is the material we purchased from so and so supplier you please process the payment so that means against the grn payables department has to create the purchase invoice within the purchase invoice what details we have to specify who is the supplier what is the supplier address how much amount we have to pay and when we have to pay and how we have to pay how in the sense through check or cash or electronic process what is the method of payment and all the details will be including within the purchase invoice and once we arrive the due date to make the payment the payables department will take the responsibility of making the payment the payables department will take the responsibility of making the payment how this purchasing department is creating the uh, rfq based on the requisition based on the requisition we are creating rfq and we are executing all these steps once we receive the material into organization so based on that grn or say receipt the payables department will create purchase invoice so based on the purchase invoice you can identify when we have to make the payment by following the dates the payables department will process the payment to respective supplier and if the purchase is related to asset here we take in the simple example laptop okay laptop maybe that is our business we are purchasing the laptops and we are selling the laptops instead of purchasing the laptop if you are going to purchase some asset for the organization 
you are purchasing furniture or you are purchasing the building or you are purchasing computers to use in the office those will become assets to the organization if the purchase invoice is related to asset related purchase what payables department will do is they will be sharing that asset details with the asset department so that asset department would create asset okay it could be asset related purchase or any item related purchase that should be done by purchasing department they have to pass them information to payables department if the purchase is related to some items which we required in the inventory we no need to communicate that information to asset department the payables department is not going to inform to asset department if the purchase invoices belongs to some expense related purchase or some item related purchase which is required within the inventory if the purchase is related to asset related purchase fixed asset then payables department should communicate that information with asset department saying we purchased one building and so these are the details that sort of communication is payables department should establish with asset department once asset department will get those details based on those details they'll create the asset and when there is asset it could be building or machinery or furniture or vehicles the asset department what they'll do is they'll start calculating the depreciation so based on the usage we have to reduce the value of asset which we calculate as a depreciation okay the asset department will take the responsibility of maintaining the assets when you say assets not current assets fixed assets so it could be building or it could be vehicles or furniture computers whatever are being used within the organization those we call as fixed assets so asset department will take the responsibility of maintaining all those assets and they would calculate the depreciation against those assets based on the usage or how the value will keep decreasing so that sort of communication would be established the what payables department is doing if the purchase invoice is related to asset purchase then only they'll communicate with the asset department otherwise no so it could be asset related invoice or expense related invoice or item purchase related invoice it, it, it can be any invoice ultimately we have to make the payment once payment is done okay once payment is done by payables department what payables department would do is the payables department will share this payment information with cash department what information the payables department is going to share payment information okay the payables department will share payment information with the cash management why payables department is sharing payment information with the cash management so what cash department will do is they'll maintain the bank bank accounts the cash department responsibilities the they maintain the bank accounts and they do the bank account bank statement reconciliations okay the cash department responsibilities maintaining the bank accounts which are owned by organization and they do the bank statement reconciliation what does it mean by bank statement reconciliation it's very simple as per payables department okay as per payables department they will take all the payments they'll take all the payments details say payment 1 payment 2 all the payments which are processed by payables department they'll take all the payment de details other side they'll take the payments which are processed through bank account those we can find in the bank statement they'll take all the payments information from the bank statement okay what cash department is doing they are collecting the details one way from payables department 
Yes, the payables department is sharing the payment information with the cash department. Other side, the payables de cash department will get bank statements from the bank. As per payables, we process the uh, process only eight payments. As per our bank statement, how many payments are processed? They will cross check. Say as per our payables, only say in this month we paid only eight payments, but our bank statement says ten payments are processed. Now there will be situation to find out why two payments difference we are able to see between our payables department and the bank statement information. This need to be identified. So the reasons could be in payables. Yes, through our pay payables department, as per their books, eight payments only issued, but bank statements shows ten payments are cleared, ten payments are processed. Now we may find out the reason two payments the payables department forgot to record in their books, or else the scenario could be as per payables department. They processed eight payments, but bank statement is showing only five payments. They have to find out the reason. There is a difference between the payables department records and the bank statement three payments, right? Between these two statements, payables department statement and the bank statement, between these three payments difference we can see. Then they'll find out the reasons why these three payments are not processed. Okay, not cleared or not submitted to bank, which are not presenting in the bank statement. They'll find out the reasons. Okay, we process payment today or yesterday, but that those checks are received by suppliers. Suppliers not yet submitted in the bank. That is reason those are not reflecting in the bank statement. This is what cash department has to verify. They verify. The payables department payment records with bank statement, uh, bank statement lines or the banks as per bank statement. What are the payments we processed? This we call as bank statement reconciliation. That means we cross check the payables department records with the bank statement. This we call as reconciliation. Reconciliation means cross checking between payables department records and the bank statement records. This is what. The payables department, the cash department does. So, cash department is responsible to maintain all the bank accounts which are owned by organization. And when we are using those bank accounts as per our books and the bank books, bank book is nothing but bank statement. Between these records, everything is getting synchronized. Everything is matching, or is there is any mismatch? Or else, take simple example as per. Payment payables department only two payments are processed, but our bank statement is showing five payments. Then the reason can be identified as the accountant did some fraud in the organization. Reality only two payments which organization released to the suppliers. Remaining three payments, three, four, five checks are released by accountant to some unknown people. They submitted those checks in the bank and the checks got cleared. So this information will come to know when cash department performs bank statement reconciliation. So this is what we have to understand the meaning of bank statement reconciliation. So what payables department is doing? Payables department is sharing payment information with the cash department. The cash department is getting bank statement bank statement information from the bank and payment information from payables department. These two records they are cross-checking that we are calling as bank statement reconciliation, and payables department is sharing purchase invoice information with the asset department only in case of the asset is belongs to the invoices belongs to asset related purchase. The normal purchase invoices cannot be shared with asset department. Only asset related invoices information only payables department is going to share with asset department. Then uh, there will be another department. This you may find may not find in the organization, but reality, all the information they have to consolidate for reporting purpose. What all the departments will do is the inventory department, purchasing department, payables department, cash department, asset department. What are the transactions they are recording? 
all they will be sharing with the common department to prepare the financial reports. If you want to prepare the reports across all the department related activities, all the data we have to get into this common department so that we'll be able to generate the reports across this department, whatever the activities are happened, how the transactions are happening. So we'll be able to address by preparing the reports. So these are the various departments will involve in the procurement process. But reality when you talk about procurement, these are the two primary departments literally involved in the procurement process. Once procurement is done, see the requisition is raised by inventory department. The procurement activity should be executed by purchase department. Just the same information we are passing to payables department to process the payment. But when you talk about procurement process, you should understand this sort of communication from which department to which department, what sort of communication takes place, you should remember and you have to understand. Now let's talk about what are the applications Oracle is providing to handle these department related activities. To maintain the stock and to create the requisitions and to process the approvals, not only these, there are many other activities we can perform within the inventory. Once we get into this application, we'll discuss more detail level. But to understand the procurement process, you don't need to get more points which are related to inventory department, not required to understand the process. What are the features are available within the inventory application that we'll discuss and we'll be working on the same. So to understand the procurement process, so simply we have to understand inventory is responsible to maintain the stock. If there is any shortage within the inventory, the inventory will take the responsibility of raising the require, requisition. Requisition talks about what is the requirement in the organization. That requisition should be approved. So to manage all this stock maintenance, rising, creating the requisition and approving the same, we have an application from Oracle called as Oracle Inventory. Okay, Oracle Inventory application. In short, we call as INV. Okay, we, the short name for Oracle Inventory is INV Inventory. So the inventory department has to share the approved requisition information with the purchasing department. What purchasing department is doing? Based on the approved requisition information, the purchasing department is creating the RFQ, request for quotations. That means the purchasing department is going to get the quotations from the vendors. For that, they are sending the request saying that this is our requirement, please send the quotations. Then purchasing department would receive the quotation from the multiple vendors. They do the quotation analysis. They'll choose the best quotation. Then they'll place the order to the supplier, which is approved purchase order. And whenever we receive the material into our organization, we record the receipt or you can call as goods receipt note. If required, we may perform the purchase returns. We'll return the material back to the supplier if any damage with those items which we are receiving from the supplier. To manage all these activities, we have an application from Oracle. We call it as Oracle Purchasing. Oracle Purchasing. In short, you can call as PO. Why we are calling as PO? From where they take in PO? When you talk about short name, here there is not, nothing as a PO. But out of all these activities, what we do within the purchasing, the key activity is purchase order. Since this application name also, we cannot give any short name. So that is the reason since the purchase order is the key activity within the purchasing department that they're taken as a PO here. When you talk about application point of view, what does it mean by PO? You have to say Oracle purchasing. But in terms of activities, PO means purchase order. Don't say Oracle purchasing means PO. PO stands for purchase or no. PO stands for purchasing application. So they given short name for purchasing as a PO. It refers purchasing application. As activity, when you say PO, that is purchase order. 
okay so this is what we have to understand so once we receive the material into organization this purchasing department will pass that information this grn information with the payables department what payables department is doing against that receipt you can call it as grn or you can call it as receipt against that receipt payables department will create purchase invoice payables department should create the purchase invoice if this purchase invoice is related to asset related purchase the payables department should pass that information to asset department based on that asset department will create fixed asset and when they are using that same asset they'll calculate the depreciation also if the invoice is not related to asset related invoice the payables department won't share the invoice details with the asset department so once we arrive the due date the payables department will take the responsibility of making the payment Here, <clears throat> simple point is the payables department is taking the responsibility of creating the purchase invoices against the grn and based on the due dates payables department will process the payment to suppliers to create the purchase invoices and to process the payments we have an application from oracle we call as oracle accounts payables oracle accounts payable this is one of the application we have in short we call as ap accounts payable application so here within the accounts payable application we can create the purchase invoice and we can process the payments and already we discussed this our payables department will share the payment information with the cash department for bank statement reconciliation purpose and other side the cash department will take the responsibility of maintaining the bank accounts to maintain the bank accounts and to perform the bank statement reconciliations we have an application from oracle that we call as oracle cash management oracle cash management the short name is cm or you can call as ce also okay cm or ce you can use the term with the short name called as cm but there is another application called as cost management that is the reason oracle refers the oracle cash management short name as a ce but generally we use short name for cash management as a cm only okay you can just represent the cash management with the short name called as cm or ce ce stands for cash entry okay ce stands for cash entry system that is nothing but cash management so by using the cash management application you can maintain the bank accounts and you can perform the bank statement reconciliation here we are discussing very primary activities which can be performed by specific department or application so final all the information from inventory purchasing and cash management from accounts payables and this asset department what asset department is doing based on asset purchase related information they are creating the fixed assets and they would be calculating the depreciation based on the usage of the assets so to maintain the fixed assets and to calculate the depreciation it's all about asset maintenance we have an application from oracle that we call as oracle fixed assets oracle fixed assets we call as fa we have application called as fa by using this fixed assets application you can create and maintain the assets and you can calculate the depreciation against those assets now from all these applications from inventory from po from cm from ap and fa from all these applications or say from all these departments data will be shared with the common department so to get the data from all these applications into one place we have an application from oracle called as oracle general ledger okay we call as gl so once you get all the data from the different applications which refers different departments we 
prepare the financial reports within the GL application, general ledger application. These are the different applications we have where we use each application for one department. Okay. This is a typical procurement process as per Oracle application or in a very general business term we use as P2P cycle. We call it as whatever we are discussing this process we call as P2P cycle. What does it mean by P2P? P2P stands for procure to pay. That means this process covers the initiate of procurement to till we make the payment. Which departments are involved, applications are involved primarily these three departments or three applications procure to pay. So right from procurement initiative to till we make the payment, okay, what are the process we are following that we call as procure to pay cycle. Why we are calling a cycle? Yes, it's a cycling activity. Whenever you want to purchase, you have to raise the requisition, you have to take the approval, you have to raise the RFQs, you have to receive the quotations, you have to do analysis, you have to choose the best, you have to place the order with approvals, you have to receive the material and the same information you have to communicate to the payables department AP and AP has to create the purchase invoices and they have to process the payments. The AP has to share the payment information with the cash management and if the invoice is related to asset invoice, AP has to share the information with the FA and finally all the information should be shared with the GL. So this will keep repeating whenever there is a need within the organization. Sometimes there may not be need of getting the quotations and all. Say you got requirement yesterday you executed all these things and today again you need 100 laptops just one day gap because of one day gap again you no need to request for quotation from the different vendors. You have a validated vendor directly you can place the purchase order. Okay. The requisition will be raised by inventory department the ones that is approved since we have a supplier who is supplied very recently say yesterday only then directly you can place the purchase order the, you can create the purchase order once it's approved you can place that order to supplier then you receive the material again you no need to do all these activities if there is some time gap today we purchased after two months we are going to purchase once again or else if you are going to deal with the new suppliers yes you have to go through this quotation process and analysis and choosing the best quotation if you are dealing with the same supplier, there is not much time gap, there is no price fluctuations related to those items. In that case, without taking quotations again, you can proceed with the same supplier. Okay, this is what we have to understand. This process we call as P2P cycle. We should be very much clear about this P2P cycle. So, reason is when we are dealing with this inventory and purchasing, the inventory is will inventory will have a communication with the purchasing and purchasing will have a communication with the payables department. So in the P2P cycle from requisition till we make the payment, all the activities need to be handled. And once payment is done, again the payables department is going to share that information with which department. Finally, all the information goes to which application. We should have better understanding about it. So that is the reason we should understand about P2P cycle. P2P stands for procure to pay. The P2P cycle starts with the requisition and ultimately ends with the payment. Once we make the payment, the process will end. But other points also we are trying to understand since these applications will have a communication with those applications to pass the data which is required by those applications to create the assets or to perform the bank statement reconciliation or to create the financial reports based on the data which is available. So this is what we have to understand about P2P cycle. Just remember this is a P2P cycle when you attend for the interviews it's a very basic question where they can understand what sort of process understanding you have about the applications. You have to be good enough to explain. First point is to understand. The second point is to explain. It's not just we, we, we are 
understanding this but you should be able to explain if somebody is going to ask what do you mean by p2p cycle if somebody is going to if this is a question to me i can explain when you talk about p2p cycle so if there is any requirement in the inventory we raise the requisition that has to be approved by inventory department then that information will be passed to purchasing department based on approved requisition purchasing department will raise the rfq and will purchasing department will receive the quotations from the different vendors there will be analysis process and finally the purchasing department will choose the best quotation based on that they'll place the order to supplier which is approved and whenever we receive the material from the supplier that will record as a receipt or call it as goods receipt note and if any damage to that item we may return to supplier which we call as purchase returns the purchasing department will pass grn information with the payables department the pay based on the grn information payables department will create the purchase invoice and once we arrive the due date they'll process the payment against that purchase invoice if the purchase invoice is related to asset purchase the payables department will share that information with the asset department based on that information asset department will create the fixed asset based on the usage they will be calculating the depreciation against that asset and other side the payables department will share payment information with the cash management or cash department we are referring the application so let's use the applications only the payables department will share payment information with the cash management the cash management will take the responsibility of maintaining the bank accounts and cash management will perform the bank statement reconciliation Finally, all the information we have to send to general ledger application, okay, GL. So based on the data which is available in financial uh, GL application, we prepare the financial reports. This is how you should explain if somebody is going to ask you, what do you mean by P2P cycle or explain P2P cycle, okay. Just go through all these points, read and remember all these and try to give the presentation so that you can get ready to give the presentation on P2P cycle. That's all. Any questions on the same, please? Any questions from anyone? Why we are including these applications also here? The reason is our supply chain related application, our SEM applications are communicating with the finance applications that is the reason we have to understand how the communication takes place once our SEM applications will establish the communication the finance further process how it goes that we should understand as a part of P2P cycle so any questions on the same please any questions from anyone No questions? Fine. If no questions, we can just move on to another process. Okay. So that is sales process. Now we'll see the sales process. In case of sales process, ideally the sales department gets orders from the customers. Customers place the orders to sales department, right? So here you can say sales department will get the orders from the customers and they'll record that order as a sales order. Okay, the sales department will record the sales order whenever they get the order from the customer. Call it as SO, sales order. So whenever they get the order from the customer, what they have to do is they have to check with the inventory department whether stock is available or not okay so we know inventory department responsibility is stock maintenance they have to maintain the stock whenever sales department get the order from the customer they'll they'll accept they'll take the order from the customer 
and after taking the order from the customer they have to promise to the customer it's nothing but giving the confirmation in other words you can say booking the order just we received before we go to give the confirmation to the customer the sales department should check the stock availability with the inventory department okay they'll just that means there'll be communication between the sales department and inventory department if there is any order to sales department when sales department receives the order from the customers they'll check stock availability within the inventory department fine they just verified the stock yes stock is available they got the update from inventory department as stock is available then what sales department will do is they'll give the confirmation to the customer saying that yes what are the material you need what are the quantity you need for the same we will be able to supply as on date which is given by us so a customer is asking they need 50 laptops that to dell laptops they need within one week the same they will check with inventory department say within the inventory stock is available then sales department should inform to customer saying that yes we are going to supply 50 laptops within one week that they have to give as a confirmation so once the once they give the confirmation to the customer the same they will track in their books as a booking the sales order that means they'll book the sales order booking the sales order is nothing but giving the confirmation to the customer as we are going to supply done okay booked now where is the stock the stock is available within the inventory department stock is available within the inventory department now when you look at typical inventory structure it looks like this so this is how inventory can be managed say the total space what you could see is this is the inventory space within that there could be some partition okay to maintain the different material with more segregation and here i just given the different partitions we are calling as sub inventories the total area we are calling as inventory within that the sub parts whatever we have in the inventory we are calling as sub inventories sub inventory 1 sub inventory 2 3 4 the sub inventory 1 you may use to store the mobiles the sub inventory 2 may be for the purpose of storing the laptops and the 3 may be for desktops and sub inventory 4 may be for stationary okay this is how what are the items we are going to maintain within the inventory to segregate and to maintain within the inventory area we can maintain the sub inventories fine now this is a common place which we can use which we call as receiving area or shipping area say we are going to purchase from the supplier when you purchase the material from the supplier say you are going to purchase from the supplier okay so supplier is going to send the material to us so directly we'll receive the material from supplier to this area only okay this area so receiving area once you receive the material here we'll be placing that material in the respective sub inventories or else you are going to sell the material to the customer okay so you are going to sell the material to customer the point here is first we'll receive the material into this area then from that area the, that material will be placing in the respective sub inventory so you are going to sell some material to the customers in that case say the stock is available within the sub inventory one now what we have to do you have to move the material from this sub inventory right you have to move the material from sub inventory to this shipping area after shipping after moving the material to shipping area then you can ship to your customer so after receiving the after moving the material from sub inventory to shipping area then the same material you have to ship to customer that means when you are receiving the material into our inventory first we are taking into this area receiving area from there we are moving into respective sub inventory when you are selling the material also first we are picking the material from sub inventory one and we will be placing here so from here you may load that material into truck finally you will be shipping the material to the customer 
when you are receiving the material and we are, when you are shipping the material the two cases the item should pass through this area this area we call as staging area staging area what is the purpose of staging area to store the material or goods or items for a temporary purpose what is the temporary time when you receive from the supplier will place in that staging area then will move into the right is sub inventory when you are selling to the customer will pick the material from sub inventory and will place in the staging area from there we can ship to the customer so this is how you could see the in basic inventory structure how the organizations maintains okay so total area total area we are calling as inventory right total area is maybe inventory or inventory organization you can call within that inventory there will be some partition called as staging area which we use as a common space to receive receiving time we will place the material when we are shipping also we will pick and will place the material in that same area that we call as staging area the other partition within the inventory is sub inventory okay we have to understand these three terms what it means so inventory means total warehouse area within that staging area means the area which we use to place the material for a temporary purpose before you take into sub inventory or before you ship to the customer and sub inventory is it's a kind of physical segregations to store the material separately so now the point here is we are receiving the order from the customer that we are recording the sales order and we are checking the stock availability with, with the inventory department if stock is available we are giving the confirmation to the customer the same we are recording as a booking sales order once booking is done what is the next step the next step is we have to ship the material to customer where we have stock stock is available within the inventory so the inventory department will take the responsibility of doing all these activities or else as a part of sales there could be some other department called as shipping department will be involving in those activities but ideally the physical activities would takes place within the inventory only now first what they have to do is was well, since we given the confirmation to the customer the first step is we have to move the material from sub inventory to staging area whenever this activity happens physically within the inventory or warehouse department the inventory department will inform to sales department saying that again it's again a so sales order we move the material or else they'll communicate to the sales department saying that from sub inventory 1 we moved 50 laptops to staging area and we packed those are ready to load it to the truck and to ship to the customer that sort of communication they'll give to sales department so whenever inventory will move the material from sub inventory to staging what sales department will do is the same they'll record in their books as pick release they'll record in their books as pick release has happened pick release in the sense they release the material they pick the material from sub inventory and they placed in the staging area so based on the item movement sales department will record the same in their books otherwise customer will communicate customer will connect to the sales department only we placed order you given the confirmation what is the status of my order if inventory department is not going to communicate to the sales department sales department won't be having any information to communicate with the customer to answer to customer queries that is the reason since sales department requested inventory department to ship the material to customer whatever they are doing against the same sales order they have to communicate with the sales department that means whenever we move the material from sub inventory to staging area in the sales department we have to record the same as pick release pick release is nothing but moving the material from sub inventory to staging whenever we move the material from sub inventory to staging that we track in our books sales department books as pick release happened that's it
So once you move the material from sub inventory to staging area, the next step is moving the material from the staging to customer location. Whenever you move the material from sub inventory staging to customer location, whenever we initiate the shipping activity, the sales department will track the same in their books as a ship confirmation. Ship confirmation. Okay. They will record in their books as ship confirmation. Ship confirmation is nothing but moving the material from our inventory to customer location. Okay. So once you ship the material to the customer, there are chances where customer can return the material. You supplied 50 laptops, one laptop got damaged. Supplier, customer is going to return that material back to us. In that case, you have to record the sales returns. Okay, the sales department will take the responsibility of recording the sales returns. What are the sales they did against those sales? If any returns from the customer, that also need to be managed by sales department only. So that is the responsibility of sales department. When they get the order from the customer, they are recording as a sales order. And if stock is available, they are booking the sales order. In some scenarios, even stock is not available, they may book the sales order. Why and how? Say they spoke to inventory department as stock is so, so I mean they spoke to inventory and inventory saying stock is not available. In that case, the inventory can talk to purchase department saying we need 50 laptops, we need within one week. Can we get 50 laptops ready within one week? If purchasing department is going to say yes, we can keep 50 laptops ready within one week, then based on that information sales department can give the confirmation to their customer since they have a possibility of purchasing and supply. So that is another scenario even we don't have stock availability we can book the sales order. Once we book the sales order the physical activity takes place within the inventory that is moving material from sub inventory to staging. Whenever material is moved from sub inventory to staging the sales department will record in their books as a pick release is happened. That means material is moved from material picked and placed in the staging area. Whenever we ship the material to customer location from our inventory to customer location that sales department will record in their books as a shipment is done. It's nothing but ship confirmation. So any returns from the customers that need to be managed by sales department which we call as sales returns. Once ship confirmation is done, the sales department will pass that information to receivers department saying for so and so customer, so and so material with the so and so quantity we shipped and customer agreed to pay within 10 days, please follow up and collect the payment. That sort of communication sales department will pass to receivers department. So that means they will be sharing ship confirmation details with the receivables department. Based on the ship confirmation details which is received by receivables department, they will create the sales invoice. Based on ship confirmation details, sales department will create sales invoice. Within the sales invoice we can find who is the customer, that means to which customer sales department sold the material, what are the items sold how much quantity, what is the amount customer has to pay, when customer has to pay, to where they ship the material, to where they send the invoice, okay, to where we have to send the invoice, all the details they can find within the sales invoice. That's how sales department will create the sales invoice. They'll create the sales invoice and they'll send the sales invoice to the customer. Once the service department will receive the payment from the customer, they will create the receipt. You can call it as cash receipt also. So against the sales activity, the service department is creating the sales invoice and definitely they do follow up. They will keep in touch with the customer saying that you have to pay on so and so date. They may offer the discount saying if you pay early, you can we can give you the discount. This is how they will have a communication. Finally, once we receive the payment, once receivers department receive the payment from the customer that they'll record as a receipt. They'll create the receipt against the sales invoice. What sales receivers department will do is the receipt information they will be sharing with 
caste department already discussed the responsibility of caste department they'll maintain the bank accounts and they do the bank statement reconciliations okay so what are the payments we receive from the customer that payment information receivables department will share with the cash department so that the cash department can perform the bank statement reconciliation here what reconciliation how they do as per receivables department to say we receive 10 payments we receive 10 payments 10 payments means 10 receipts right if you receive one payment from the customer if receivables department is receiving one payment from the customer that they'll record as a receipt say we re received 10 payments 10 payments will create as a 10 receipts this is as per receivables department as per receivables re department records the other side the cash department will get the bank statement okay will get the bank statement as per bank statement bank statement shows only seven receipts receipts in the sense seven deposits only seven payments we received from the customers so now receive cash department will take the responsibility of finding out the reasons as per receivables department 10 receipts that means 10 payments we received from the customers and those are recorded in the receivables department and once you receive the payment from the customer say you received to check once you receive the check you will be recording that payment information in the receivables department and the checks we have to submit to the bank for clearing now as per our receivables 10 checks we received are say 10 payments we received but bank statement shows seven receipts only the cash department may find out the reason yes 10 payments were issued but only 7 payments are cleared still 3 payments are pending once those 3 payments are cleared by bank the 3 payments also would reflect in the bank statement that's how you can find 10 receipts or 10 payments which are given by customers so this is how they'll find out the variance and they'll try to find the reason they'll make sure that everything is getting reconciled if something is not getting reconciled they have to find the reason so that they can avoid the fraud which can be takes place within the organization so that is the reason receivables department should take the responsibility of sharing that receipts information in other words you can say customer payments that they have to share with the cash department so that the cash department can use that receipt information to cross check with the bank statement information which we call as bank statement reconciliation so we cross check our receivables receipts data with the bank statement that process we are calling as bank statement reconciliation the finally all the information will be shared with the common department to prepare the financial reports okay so this is how we have to understand the sales process so already we discussed to maintain the stock within the inventory department okay we have an application called as oracle inventory right so INV and sales department what sales department is doing sales department is creating the sales orders they are booking the sales orders based on the stock availability within the warehouse or else based on the supply possibilities supply possibility means purchasing and supply okay that could be one of the example and whenever we move the material from sub inventory to staging sub inventory to staging what sales department is doing they are recording the same action as a pick release whenever we move the material from the staging to customer location the same will be recorded by sales department as a ship confirmation if any returns from the customer that also need to be managed by sales department to perform all these activities to record the sales orders to book the sales orders to perform the pick release related tracking and ship confirmation tracking which happens in the inventory and to perform the sales returns 
we have an application from Oracle which we call as Oracle Order Management. In short, we call as OM Order Management. So this ship confirmation details this sales department would share with the receivables department. What receivables department is doing? Based on the ship confirmation details, the receivables department is creating the sales invoice. Whenever they get the payment from the customer, they are recording the receipt against the sales invoice. To record the sales invoices and to create the receipts, we have an application from Oracle that we call as Oracle Accounts Receivables. Accounts Receivable. The short name is ER. So the sales uh, receivables department, what they do is they have to share the information with cash department, which information receipt information. So what purpose we have cash department to maintain the bank accounts and to perform the bank statement reconciliations. To maintain the bank accounts and to perform the bank statement reconciliation, we have an application from Oracle that we call as Oracle Cash Management. You can just call it as CM or CE. So from all these departments or say from all these applications, the information need to be communicated with the common department where you can create the financial reports. To collect and maintain all these department related data in one place, we have application from Oracle that is Oracle General Ledger, we call it GL. Okay, Oracle General Ledger. So. So this is how we have a different applications which are involved or say the different uh, departments which are involved in the sales process. So this sales process simply we call as O2C cycle. We call it as O2C cycle. Don't write as a kind of formula and all O2C cycle. So O2C stands for order to cash. Order to cash cycle. That means this process starts with order. We'll receive the order. This process will start with order management. Of course, this order management will have a communication with inventory also. And this process is starting with order and it ends with the cash once we receive the payment. The process starts when we receive the order from the customer and the process ends when we receive the payment from the customer. So ideally these three departments or these three applications you can treat as primary applications or primary departments which involves in O2C cycle. Okay, these three departments or three applications are involved in the O2C cycle as a primary applications. Already we discussed these applications will have a communication with which other applications are say which, with which other departments already we discussed. The receivables department or receivables application will have a communication with the cash department or call as cash management application. And all the applications will have a communication with the general ledger application to share that application related data to prepare the financial reports. Okay, here you mentioned this application will have a communication with this and this application will have a communication with this. This application finally will have a communication with this. Okay, this is how that communication will take place. When you talk about sharing the data with general ledger application, the inventory would share and uh, receivables will share, CM will share, all these applications will share the data with Oracle General Ledger application. This process we are calling as O2C cycle. This process also we are calling as cycle because this is kind of cycling activity which would keep repeating. Whenever the order management or sales department is going to receive the order from the customer, all these activities need to be performed. 
the order need to be booked the pick release should take place ship confirmation should happen before booking we have to check the stock availability within the inventory based on the ship confirmation the information will be passed to receivables department they'll create the sales invoice they collect the payment from the customer that they'll record as a receipt and the same receipt information they'll share with the cash management for bank statement reconciliation all the data need to be communicated with the general ledger application for financial reports so whenever there is new order this is this process should run as a cycle so that is the reason this also we call as o2c cycle so out of this our scm applications are these two only right but these scm applications has tight integration tight connectivity very close communication with the finance applications also that is the reason we should understand the complete cycle when we are going to work within the application under reality major will be working on scm applications but we should have a basic knowledge on finance applications also since the finance applications has integration connectivity or communication with our scm applications so this is all about o2c cycle okay which we can handle the sales process so in the same way like if somebody is going to ask you the question okay explain o2c cycle you have to say when there is order from the customer the sales department will receive as a sales order or else simply you can say when there is order from the customer will record the sales order within the order management and will book the sales order in instead of saying modules refer with the term called as departments refer with the term called as department then that sounds really good so it's all about we are talking about business to manage that business process what are the applications we are going to use you no need to address those applications when you explain the processes always refer department simply you can say so o2c cycle here when you talk about o2c cycle when we get the order from the customer the sales department will record that in their books as a sales order and by checking the stock availability with the inventory department they'll book the sales order whenever we move the material from sub inventory to staging that would be recorded as a pick release by sales department and whenever we ship the material from the inventory to customer location that can be tracked as a ship confirmation by sales department if there are, if any returns from the customer those returns we call as sales returns the sales returns also can be managed by sales department so finally the sales department will communicate the ship confirmation details with the receivables department against the ship confirmation details the receivables department will create sales invoice whenever they get the payment from the customer that they'll record receipt and the receipt information they'll share with the cash department or say you can say department or you can say application name okay but if you refer with a department name that really sounds good as you are talking about business process or else it appears as you are talking about application process okay anything you can choose you may refer application name or you can refer department name you have to talk about the process that's very important so the receivables department will share the receipt information with the cash management or say cash department so that the cash management can use that receipts information for bank statement reconciliation finally all the information will share with the general ledger application to prepare the financial reports this is how we have to explain if you are going to face the question called as explain o2c cycle when you attend for any interviews that could be scm related interview or finance related interview this this would be very basic cycles you have to understand what happens within the scm what happens within the finance how the communication takes place takes place between this scm applications and financial applications we should have strong understanding so that is the reason these two cycles are very much important we should understand so once you understand when you start working on the application simply you can understand where we are standing what happens before this step what happens after that step you will be able to 
understand very easily. So without discussing this P2P cycle, for example, if I'm going to show you how to create the purchase order, you don't know what is the background of the sequence of activities already executed. Or else if I'm going to show how to create the purchase invoice in the payables, yes, you can understand how to create, but you cannot understand the background. You should understand in and out process, which happens in the P2P and OTC cycles in sequence across all these applications. Then you'll feel very comfortable when we are working on any application. So which application is going to communicate with which other application and what purpose, what we do in each and every application, we should get basic understanding by going through this P2P and OTC cycles. Any questions from anyone to understand this P2P and OTC cycles, please? Any questions from anyone, please? Any questions? Fine, no questions. Now what we'll do is, we'll go and see these two cycles in one go. In a single slide, we'll see these two cycles, how these applications are communicated and how everything works. Okay, so already we've taken the short names for each and every application. Inventory, INV, Purchasing, PO, Cash Management, CM, Accounts Payable, AP, General Ledger, GL, Fixed Assets, FA. When you look at O2C Cycle, yes, Inventory, INV, Order Management, OM, Accounts Receivable, CR, General Ledger, GL, Cash Management, CM. Now, by taking these short names, We'll try to understand how these two cycles works together. So here we have those two P2P and OTC cycles. Okay. So here we can take the selection you can see as a P2P cycle, right? So this selection is P2P cycle. So where we raise the requisitions and that should get approved and uh, we'll create the RFQs and we'll receive the quotations and quotation analysis should take place and we'll choose the best quotations and we'll place the purchase order we'll receive the goods so that we can record the gr and goods receipt note if required we'll perform the purchase returns then po purchase department will pass this gr information with the accounts payables department based on that ap department will create within the ap will create the purchase invoices and will make the payment if this purchase invoice is related to asset purchase, the AP will be sharing that information with the FA, fixed assets. Based on that, within FA, we'll create the fixed assets and we'll calculate the depreciation. And AP, accounts payables department, or accounts payables, okay, payables department will share the payment information with the cash management, which information, payment information for the purpose of bank statement reconciliation. Finally, all the information, from all these inventory, AP, FA, and CM, from all the applications, will send the data to GL to prepare the financial reports. When you talk about O2C cycle, again here, we have to select this section for O2C. If any order from the customer, will record as a sales order, and we'll check with the stock availability with inventory, and we'll book the sales order. Once we move the material from sub inventory to staging that need to be captured by inventory order management as a pick release and whenever we ship the material from our inventory to customer location that need to be tracked that information need to be managed by order management which we call as ship confirmation if any returns from the customer that will will record as a sales returns within the order management then order management this sales department will communicate the information to the receivables department which information they'll share, ship confirmation details they'll be sharing with the receivables department. Based on those details, receivables department will create or within the receivables will create sales invoice. Whenever we get the payment from customer, we'll record the receipt against the sales invoice. The receivables department will share the receipt information with the cash management for bank statement reconciliation. Finally, all the data will share with the GL to prepare the financial reports. If you look at these P2P and OTC cycles, you can notice which departments or which applications are involving in these two cycles. 
which departments are involving or which applications are involving in the two cycles inventory cash management gl these three departments or three applications are involving in the p2p as well as otc cycle so this is what we have to understand when you talk about our supply chain management only this section okay only this section falls under our supply chain management the below applications or departments are related to finance even we are going to work on SAM applications will touch base on basic finance related activities will go through basic purchase pay, AP payables the basic receivables and the very basic GL which is very much required to work on any application okay so we'll try to grab the basic knowledge which is required from the finance when we are working on SEM side we'll be focusing on SEM the complete information what Oracle is providing we'll try to understand each and everything and even we are learning SEM we should know the basics from finance also so that you will be able to understand these communications between PO and AP, OM and ER. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. So any questions from anyone please. And one more point, the GL, GL is the general ledger application. Apart from GL, all the applications irrespective of the applications are SEM applications or finance application or HRMS application or project applications irrespective of the applications falls under which product family all the applications we call as sub ledger applications gl is general ledger other than gl all the applications we call as sub ledger applications okay sub ledger applications because from all the applications we have to get the data into gl this is master ledger gl is the master ledger which will be holding different applications data if you compare this gl with other ledger other application these are sub part these can produce some data to gl when you can verify the data which is available in the gl so every application will have a some contribution of data with the gl as a sub part when you compare with the GL. GL can hold different applications data if those applications are going to share the data with the GL. But if you go to AP, you can find AP related data, purchase invoices, payments. If you go to ER, you can find sales invoice and receipts data. If you go to FA, you can find fixed receipts and depreciation related data. But if you go to GL, the all applications data you can find in the GL. That is the reason this is general ledger which will be holding different applications data if you compare other applications with the general ledger these all we call as sub ledgers these all are sub ledger applications other than gl all the applications we call as sub ledger applications this is what we have to understand so any questions from anyone to understand this p2p and OTC cycles it's not like just understanding you have to get ready with this information where you will be able to explain to others okay Try to explain to someone who doesn't know about these processes. Take the feedback from them, what they understood, how you explain, whether they are able to understand or you are confusing them. Okay, check from your end. That's very, very important. So hope you got the points, what we are trying to understand from this P2P and OTC cycles. If you understand that is not enough, you check yourself whether you are able to make someone to understand what we are going to speak about these two cycles that's very important the same logic you can apply for everything what we are going to discuss and what you are going to understand any questions from anyone please any questions from anyone Okay, if you don't have any questions, I should understand as you are okay with everything. Okay, no issues. I'll be sharing the same video. You, again, you can go through it. If you have any questions, you can make a note and we can discuss in the next session. Okay, since no questions, we are going to wind up for today. We'll connect tomorrow same time.
and we'll discuss few other points which we have to understand before we get into the application okay so that's all for today see you tomorrow have a good day and good night thank you all